Today's project is inspired by a trip to Michael's where I found this cabinet of oddities that was listed at $59.99. And knowing myself, I wanted to do this on a budget, so it was time to do some stash busting. So digging through my stash, I found these odds and ends of items that I really didn't have any project in mind for because as you can see, it's just kind of random bits, right? So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to utilize the items and bring them all together in a cabinet of oddities slash curiosities and see what we can create. I had in my stash from many years ago from the dollar spot at Target. My thought process is each one of these trays is going to house a scene of oddities. Um, I have it all kind of mapped out. I think it's going to look really cool. Now if you don't have boxes that are exactly like this that come with the book plates, you can create your own. You can buy book plates like this uh, separately on Amazon or just go to Dollar Tree and find boxes that are similar. Dollar Tree has a wide selection of wooden products and DIY products so that's a really great place to start. Also just get creative as well. In the frame department at Dollar Tree, they have like shadow box type boxes that you can pull apart, take out the image that's inside and you're left with a fresh piece that you can just paint over. In terms of configuration, I was thinking, so we have the large one, a middle size and a small one. So I'm thinking about putting the two larger ones in the middle and then taking the medium size boxes and putting them on here and just kind of keep it symmetrical. Also, I do want to reattach these at some point. So I want to make sure that the holes are facing up so that they are visible to the eye still. glue I'm going to use is wood glue from Dollar Tree. I'm going to go ahead and glue all of these sides together here. I do want to let this dry for at least 24 hours just to make sure it's all cured and then we can continue the process. So the trays have had a chance to fully dry. What I'm going to do now is I want to cover the very back of it. I'm going to leave the stickers of the tags on. It's going to get covered anyways, but I want to make this a little bit more leathery looking textured. So I'm going to use tissue paper. You can use whatever color you have on hand. I'm using yellow because it's what I have. I just took a few sheets, crumpled it together to get extra wrinkles and texture in the tissue paper. And then I'm gonna take a water mixture along with PVA glue. So you could use Elmer's glue, you could use Jot glue, which is from Dollar Tree, whatever you have on hand. I'm gonna go ahead and pour some into the water mixture. Just wanna kinda eyeball how much glue and water. There's really no exact formula. You just want it so that you have a little bit more glue versus water. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to coat the back and you're just gonna spread that all over. Before I start coating the sides, I'm just going to go in with my first layer of tissue paper. I'm gonna pat that down with my fingertips. I don't wanna lose a lot of the wrinkles because that's what's gonna give you your texture. And I'm gonna put some on the sides. You just wanna keep building, building it up. It's okay if the paper tears in a couple spots because you can always go back in with some more and address that area. After the tissue paper has had a chance to dry for at least 24 hours, I did go in with a Dollar Tree nail file. You can use whatever nail file or sanding paper you have on, on hand. And I just sanded down the front and the back and the edges just to remove any sort of loose tissue paper that maybe didn't adhere properly. Now, as you can see, the application is not meant to be perfect. It's completely okay. It actually goes with the vibe of it, which is that vintage grungy look. If that's not your style, that's completely fine. You can opt out of using the tissue paper and just leave it uh, as simple wood and just paint over it. So really the project is flexible to whatever your preferences are. So as you can see, the front is not perfect and that is okay. This is going to be painted over, including this horrible yellow bright tissue paper that will also be covered as well. So next step is painting. And then for the exterior and the interior. So I'm gonna go ahead and Cover this in black, let that dry, and then dry brush some of the deep bronze and the chocolate brown metallic on top of it. 
Now that the black paint has had a chance to dry, you can see the texture that's kind of peeking through now. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be using the chocolate brown metallic as well as the deep bronze metallic. So I'm going to start off with the chocolate brown first and just kind of give this a little bit of a light wash. I'm going to go in using paper towel just so I can kind of lightly rub the raised areas and then add in the bronze. Now for this kind of technique, you can use a brush, you can use whatever you feel very comfortable with, which actually I'm going to start using my brush. And it's okay if you get like concentrated areas of paint, it just kind of adds to the vibe of it. It's such cool texture, it almost gives it kind of like a marbled look. Now I'm gonna go in with the deep bronze and I'm going to do the same sort of technique. And then I'm gonna take that same technique and I'm going to bring it onto the front as well. Now I'm just gonna take this artsy copper color and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to work that into the brush, pick a little bit of that pigment up and then brush the whole thing with that kind of coppery pigment. What I wanted to walk you through was after I added the Artsy Copper Pigment, I ended up going in with a little bit of some basic brown paint using the same dry brush technique and then followed it up with the black paint, just a little bit, again, dry brush technique all over. And this was just to make it really realistic and preserve the dimension and depth of this project. I did go ahead and reattach all of the book plates to each of the individual boxes. So box number one is going to be a ghost inspired theme. Now, when you are in the process of pulling your materials, focus on a couple core items. So for instance, I have the two eyeballs, I have a peacock feather and a broken mermaid's tail. None of those have any connection with, with each other, but I ended up forming a theme around it. So I went into my stash, pulled some feathers that are within that color scheme of the peacock, the, the teals and the blues. For the eyeballs, I pulled some gears to attach to the back side of it to make it look a little bit more wonky. And then I also pulled a lot of ephemera. So if you don't have ephemera, you can use whatever you have on hand, or you can also go online and print images out. But this is from Tim Holtz, An Uninvited Guest. And then the number 31 is also from a Halloween Tim Holtz pack I already had. The train image that you'll see in just a moment, I wanted to have a haunting image of some sort. And Tim Holtz is great for having a lot of this vintage grungy ephemera. So this was also something I had from a pack of his. And then scrapbook papers. So you can use whatever you have on hand. And then of course the ones that I pulled are within that teal blue color scheme to go back to the peacock feather colors. Also, I found with this kind of project, it was very therapeutic because each of the boxes, I gave myself a limit as to how many items I would pull for each box. And some items I didn't use, some items I did, but I gave myself a limit regardless. So that's something that will really help with your creativity if you're in a creative rut or you get bogged down by having too many pieces out at once and you're like, okay, where do I start? That would be my recommendation is just to kind of start small and you'd be surprised just how quickly your boxes will come together because you have limited items and your brain just starts thinking about all of these different possibilities when you only have five pieces in front of you. So that's a really good place to start if you are getting bogged down creatively with too many items in front of you. I do like to create the scenes before I adhere everything into the box just to make sure that uh, what I want to put in there is going to work. And it just gives me a lot of flexibility with maybe taking things out or adding things in. So just kind of a tip there that I like to do as well before putting everything in the box, just kind of do everything off to the side and see if it's going to work. Also, you'll see that I layer a lot of the papers and pieces together, and that really gives a lot of depth and dimension to the project. So layering is going to be your best friend. All right, so everything has been glued down for box number one. 
So box number two is going to be witch themed. I had these vials from Dollar Tree. I also found from the Target dollar spot these vials of different themes. So this one's witch's brooms, which is going to look perfect and almost like an apothecary. Also had on hand some broomsticks from a Tim Holtz collection as well as uh, from Michael's. I also had a really haunting image of two women that kind of look like witches in terms of their attire and the way that their hats looked. It kind of looked like a witch's hat to me, so that was going to work perfectly well with this theme. I pulled some ephemera such as lace, I have brads, I have scrapbook papers, vintage scrapbook papers um, or vintage papers, and then also just other Halloween inspired scrapbook paper as well. I also pulled the Tim Holtz Distress Ink and Vintage Photo. So as you can see, I do not measure when it comes to the insides of the boxes. I just do an approximate using the width of the box, and I just find it to be easier that way. But if you prefer to measure, then by all means, you do you, and whatever works for you, I'd say go for it. Now I'm going to go in with the Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the Colorway Vintage Photo. This is definitely a great one to have on hand and in your stash. It gives you the perfect antique brown. This is one that I definitely end up reaching for quite often, so definitely recommend Vintage Photo. This particular scene is by far my favorite. I just loved how it came out with all of the vials and um, in terms of the Hocus Pocus Broom Company sign in front, that was actually a part of a Michael's uh, little pick that I took apart and I distressed it with the nail file and then added some of the Tim Holtz vintage photo ink on top. What inspired this elegant tray was basically this Kate Middleton ring that is an accessory from Party City, a costume that I got a few years ago. I'm including some Halloween papers as I have been including. This particular one in front is an Edgar Allan Poe inspired one that does have the Nevermore poem on there, which was absolutely perfect. I took an old bottle cap that I had on hand and I put a little piece of cork on the very bottom, found a picture of Edgar Allan Poe from online and printed it, trimmed it down to size, and then added glossy accents right on top, and it just gave it this really beautiful lacquered finish. I pulled some handmade paper, a tassel uh, that I had on hand. Also from the dollar spot at Target was Raven's Wings, which was absolutely perfect, some vintage playing cards I had, and just some three random feathers, as well as a brat. So as you can see, I just kind of pull random pieces of paper, I tear them. If it doesn't work out, then I kind of go on to the next piece of paper or the next piece of ephemera. And really it's about placement and what you feel comfortable with. So there was a lot of trial and error for myself, just kind of going through and seeing what worked, what looked good. Um, so don't stress too much about it. Just kind of go with the flow. And honestly, it does come together. It really does. And again, when you give yourself a limit in terms of the amount of items, it comes together a lot faster than you would think.
I go in again with the Vintage Photo by Tim Holtz, and then I follow it up with the Tim Holtz Black Soot Distress Ink. And I found that when you layer the two together, it just brings this depth and dimension that just the Vintage Photo didn't provide on its own. So you'll see in the upcoming clips that I will be adding the Black Soot as well on top of the Vintage Photo. And just like that, Mr. Edgar Allan Poe is now complete. I ended up adding, as you can see right here, the vintage key. I just had that in my stash, glued that on there. I removed the backing off of the ring that came off very easily. And then the vial of raven's wings, I ended up not using. I took out the raven's wings that were in the vial, dispersed it all throughout the drawer. So I have one peeking out behind the ring. I have one right in front and then laying, you won't be able to see it, but laying right underneath where Edgar Allan Poe's picture is. And this was an afterthought after I completed that Edgar Allan Poe box, but I went to Michael's and bought these little miniature books and I went ahead and distressed them using the um, vintage photo and the black soot as well. And I'll insert a clip after this segment to show you what it ended up looking like. I loved it. And then on top of the book, I also added a raven rub-on that I had using the Dollar Tree rub-ons uh, for Halloween. Target dollar spot for the win again. I found this vial of wool of bat, which is with just a bunch of bat confettis in there. Again, Dollar Tree also had wool of bat as well. I have no idea what that even means, but uh, we're going to go ahead and use it. I am also using a dried eucalyptus leaf that I had from a flower bouquet from my birthday. Also using this black leaf trim, lace trim as well as scrapbook papers, dictionary papers that have the definition of a bat with a picture. I also pulled some um, cardboard from a tea box that I enjoyed, which was pumpkin spice, so I'm going to use that, as well as some rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. I always like to double check after I cut the paper that it will fit inside the box because the last thing you want to do is create the scene and then realize it's either too short or too tall. As with any project, this is also very much personal preference. So if you don't like to tear the papers, you can just use the straight edges. That's totally fine. If you don't like to use lace, you can use other types of ribbon um, or pieces of trim. So there's a lot of flexibility and you don't have to necessarily follow exactly the technique that I am using for this project. It's really based upon your own subjective preferences. I also find that tearing is just a lot quicker when it comes to trying to put everything together and you don't have to necessarily have to worry about so much precision about um, you know it fitting perfectly into the square that you have so that's why I like to tear and plus it adds to the whole vintage and old grungy looking uh, vibe that I'm going for with this cabinet. And if you haven't noticed a theme, I've been going back and forth between the Distress Ink in Black Soot as well as Vintage Photo. Uh, they're really the only two inks that you would need for a project like this. And I will warn you, the Distress Inks will make you feel like you've been down a chimney sweep or two. Now when it comes to the trim, you can easily glue that down, but I have found that a very quick way to get the trim down is to use the Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher and it's basically a mini stapler and I just stapled it into place and it held it down and it also added to the vibe that I was going for as well. Now for that little section that says enjoy I actually clipped that off from the back of the tea box that I was going to use and just stapled that into place and then also stapled the eucalyptus and some trim twine trim on the bottom. Now try saying twine trim really fast three times. In this little corner here, I felt like it was missing something, so I'm gonna go into the Dollar Tree rub-ons and just clip out this small little bat here, and then I'm just gonna 
adhere it right to the top corner there. Now, if you've never used a rub-on, you can use, I'm using a glue stick. You just want to use um, something like a popsicle stick or just something that is going to be able to transfer the image onto your project. Now, if you're wondering how I'm inserting or gluing down the uh, scenes into the box, I'm just using some standard Elmer's glue, and I also add some onto the back of the scene as well. You don't want to add too much so that, you know, when you add it in, it oozes all over the place, just enough. And then if you've cut it correctly, it should fit perfectly into the square. To attach the vials or anything that isn't paper, I def definitely recommend E6000 or something of that sort as well. There are a couple things that I ended up adding off camera, and one of them is going to be this book plate that, if you remember, I had it on the very bottom of this box, but I ended up removing it because it wasn't providing stability for the bottom, and I wanted to repurpose it, so I was like, okay, I'm going to put it up here in the top left corner, and it was perfect because now you can see the word enjoy through it, almost like a picture frame around it. Now, the other screw that didn't wasn't able to screw onto the other side because it's just kind of floating in place, I ended up putting right here and attaching my vintage key right over it. So it held that in place. I added some more peacock feathers I didn't use at the beginning and decided to add it to the bottom there along with some jewels. And then at the very bottom, I folded a little piece of the remnant fabric I used in the back there, folded it in half, and then on top of that, glued a bottle of green glitter to look like potion. The vials that I'm going to potentially be using, these three are from Dollar Tree, and this is just poison. I also have this one from the Target Dollar Spot, which is the bottle of bones. And it actually came with white little bones about that size, and I didn't, I thought they were just too white. So I didn't like it. I took them out. I'm gonna save them for confetti or another project. Um, but I ended up just pulling a couple skeletons that I had apart and just putting them right in here. So bottle of bones. I have a handmade paper, wine, another gear. So here are some broken skeleton pieces, scrapbook papers. And then I also had this piece of remnant fabric cut out the skull, which was perfect. So these are the items that I pulled for this particular theme. So let's go ahead and get started. I really love these neutral color palettes and then adding in pops of color like this chartreuse green into the mixture. It just makes it pop. It's a really great accent and it just adds to the artistic flavor of the whole scene. To adhere the paper elements to each other, I use double-sided tape. You can use liquid glue, but I really prefer um, double-sided tape or something of that nature because it makes the drying process non-existent and it also prevents warping as well. I 
I did want to have the skeleton piece suspended in air and with a little bit of mobility so I ended up inserting an eyelet right at the very top and just feeding the entire piece through and then using the tiny attacher to adhere it to the very back. So Mr. Skeleton is complete. I went ahead and I didn't end up using the bag of bones uh, vial that I showed you at the beginning. I just ended up removing the bones and dispersing them throughout the tray and I think it looks way cooler. So again, we have the vials from Dollar Tree, which is trimmed cobwebs. We have some scrapbook papers that are spider themed, as well as vintage papers, fabric. We have a cobweb embellishment as well as a piece of floral from last Halloween. I was able to complete this cabinet in little to no time basically because I was really organized in terms of each tray. I knew which theme I wanted for each one. So if you go in organized and have your items already pulled, you can get this done in probably about a couple hours, which is what it took me. Um, the only thing that took the longest time was obviously waiting the 24 hours for the boxes to dry for, from the wood glue as well as having the tissue paper on there. But if you skip that step, you could have this done quite easily in a couple hours. With the amount of Tim Holtz products that I've used in this video, you would think it is a sponsored video, but it is not. I just really love Tim Holtz and his whole line of craft supplies. It's really cool. So if you haven't checked him out, definitely check him out. Uh, he can be found at Hobby Lobby and Michael's, really any craft store, Joanne's. So he's readily available and uh, highly recommend his items. They are so good. Here is the final look, and I love how each and every one of these boxes turned out. It really is truly haunting, especially in the evening when the lights are down and it's just by candlelight. It is so spooky and haunting. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and look forward to more content to come. And until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful, happy, and safe Halloween.